crystal sets. The so-called crystal set is the simplest possible type of radio receiver, comprising simply a tuned circuit and a detector. It gets its name from the fact that a simple crystal diode, in the old days a crystal and a cat's whisker combination, is used as the detector. It has many limitations, but since such a simple and inexpensive circuit is involved, it is an excellent start for absolute beginners, especially in areas where radio signal strength is high. Example, fairly near to a powerful local broadcast station. Basically, the success of a simple crystal set depends very largely on the efficiency of the tuned circuit since the complete set has no source of power other than that of the radio transmission which it receives. The tuned circuit must therefore be capable of tuning in to a broadcast station or stations of suitable power and passing as much as possible of that power on to the detector. We need not concern ourselves unduly at this stage with the theoretical aspects of the tuned circuit, except to understand that this consists essentially of a capacitor and an inductance or coil connected in a closed loop. See thus. This electrical loop will have a specific resonant frequency depending on the values of the capacitor and inductance, which is the same as saying that the circuit is tuned to maximum response to radio transmissions at that resonant frequency. To make the tuned circuit tunable over a range of frequencies, it is only necessary to vary one or other of the two component values. This can be done by using a variable capacitor used with a fixed coil or a variable inductance used in conjunction with a fixed capacitor. The former method is the more usual since it is simpler to adjust a variable capacitor than a variable inductance, but both are really equally suitable methods. We can try both in the experimental circuits which follow. Of the two components required, the inductance is made and the capacitor is bought. An inductance is merely a coil and to improve its efficiency we will wind it on a ferrite rod, a special material made from iron dust with high electromagnetic properties. Ferrite rods are made in various diameters and lengths and in the other and in the form of slabs. For the coil specified, a quarter inch diameter rod is required cut to a length of two inches if it cannot be bought in this length. A ferrite rod is quite brittle, so to cut it, it should be notched around the circumference with a small triangular file. It can then be broken off neatly. A wrapping of paper should then be made around the rod. Any type of paper will do. And a winding of 34 SWG, enameled or silk covered enameled wire, made over it, as shown in thus. Note the complete coil comprises 40 full turns, but after 20 turns have been made, a smaller loop is made of the core and twisted together. Read that again. Note that the complete coil comprises 40 full turns, but after 20 turns have been made, a smaller loop is made off the core and twisted together, and the remaining 20 turns taken around the core. This smaller loop forms a tapping point for connection at the center of the coil, the insulation being scraped off the wire at this point to make a soldered connection possible. Although a simple coil, we have already ensured relatively high efficiency in two ways. Number one, by winding the coil on a ferrite rod. And number two, by introducing a tapping point for connecting the detector so that the load is applied only across half rather than the whole coil. This reduces the damping effect 
of the load and makes the selectivity of the turn of the tuned circuit that much better. Normally, however, it will be necessary to use an external aerial as well connected to one end of the tuned circuit loop with the other end connected to a good earth. Up to 50 feet or more of thin copper wire makes a good aerial and a water pipe makes a good earth. Only in areas of strong radio signal strength can a crystal set be expected to work on a ferrite rod aerial alone. The aerial coil just made can be mounted on a base panel as shown thus and associated with either a variable capacitor or fixed capacitor of the values shown in thus. Depending on whether we want to operate the circuit as capacity tuned or inductance tuned period. In the latter case several turns of paper should be wrapped around the ferrite rod before winding the coil and then overlaid with gum strip or gummed paper to form a rigid sleeve which can slide up and down the rod. The coil is then wound in place over this sleeve. Since the rod must be moved by the fingers a plastic washer or similar shape of insulating material must also be glued to the end of the rod in order to avoid hand capacity effects. Rod position is then adjusted by grasping the plastic and not the rod itself. Here, thus, shows the complete circuit for the receiver. The additional components required are a point contact germanium diode. Mullard OA81, OA91 or equivalent, or a 1000 picofarad fixed capacitor and a high impedance deaf aid earpiece, or high impedance headphones with a DC resistance of 1 kilo ohm or more. That is all there is to it. The set is permanently switched on and it is merely a case of tuning in via adjustment of the variable capacitor or sliding the ferrite rod in and out of the coil until a station is picked up and heard. Signals will normally be heard only very weakly and some too weakly to be intelligible, but it should be possible to tune in to any strong signal at intelligible hearing strength. If not, try lengthening or repositioning the external aerial wire or try to find a better earth connection. There are also other little tricks you can try to improve reception. Connecting the aerial wire to the springs of a bed sometimes works wonders. In a particular area, the set may also work better with the external aerial connected to the earth end of the tuned circuit and no external earth connection. In some localities where radio reception in general is poor, a crystal set may be difficult to get to work at all, although you should pick up some station even if very weakly. In others you can get surprisingly good signal reception on one or more stations and pick up others very weakly. If you can get crystal set reception in your area with this simple circuit, then it is worth experimenting with further circuits as follows. Thus, shows how you can improve the volume of the reception by adding a transistor as an amplifier for the AF signal passed by the diode detector. You need only one extra component, a Mullard OC45 or OC71 transistor or equivalent connected into the circuit as shown. This time, however, you will also need a battery to provide power for the transistor amplifier. This can be anything from 1.5 to 6 volts. Start with a 1.5 volt battery and see if this is enough. If not, try 3 volts and so on, but stop at the voltage level which gives adequate amplification without introducing without introducing distortion or unwanted noise. 
If the addition of a simple amplifier seems to work well, then you can improve the performance much more satisfactorily and with better quality of reception and stability by modifying the circuit to the rather more complicated one shown in thus. This introduces stabilization of the transistor. And this picture, thus, shows a trick circuit which is worth trying as an experiment. It uses a diode detector and a transistor amplifier, but eliminates the battery. So we are back to a circuit which is powered entirely by the incoming RF signal. The diode, in fact, supplies both the AF signal The diode, in fact, supplies both the AF signal and the power to drive the transistor, the collector of the transistor being connected to the output side of the diode through the earphones. Thus is another trick circuit, which also eliminates the battery and the diode detector as well. In this case, part of the transistor is acting as a diode, the emitter base junction charging the capacitor which provides energy for the collector to work the transistor as an amplifier as well. These latter two are purely experimental circuits which demonstrate how the power of RF waves already present in the atmosphere can be utilized. As far as simple crystal receivers are concerned, the circuit shown thus is about as far as one can reasonably go. This is basically the same circuit as thus, with an additional stage of amplification, still not enough, incidentally, to operate a loudspeaker satisfactorily. Further attempt to boost the AF signal only exposes the limitations of the simple crystal circuit, particularly its selectivity. It is not worthwhile pursuing possible further developments, therefore. To improve the performance of our transistor radio, we have got to utilize rather more elaborate circuitry.